Paul, you've been in the Isle of Man and you've been meeting lots of people during the course of your visit. Mainly you're debunking the Isle of Man government's figures and in particular the proposals for the wind farm at Eriestain. Correct. What are you saying is wrong with the Isle of Man government's proposals? The Isle of Man, there's a thing called um, a load factor, which is what percentage of the theoretical wind you can get out of your wind turbines. So it's important because it tells you how much energy you're getting. And a um, lot of experience in the UK and Ireland and so on, and Scotland. You know, Scotland is a particular windy part for us. So the windiest part of the United Kingdom is Scotland, and parts of Wales, not so much, and England. And they have the, the government in England publishes the figures. And for example, the figure in Scotland, of the best, the best of Scotland is 28.4%. So. They, they simply say, in your case, you've got 20 megawatts, in this case, Alaman, 20 times 20, 24 hours in a day, whatever that is, times 365, that's a theoretical figure. What percentage do we get? We get the load factor, which is 26, 27%. I would judge, based on what's all around you, that you're going to get about 27%. That is right throughout the world, this sort of thing. This is not unusual. It's not complicated. You're claiming up to 85%. You're claiming between 100 and 150 gigawatt hours out of 172 theoretical. It's impossible. So what you're saying as a government in this Isle of Man is impossible. And because that's impossible, you're two to 300 percent wrong. And because that's wrong, all your costs are wrong. In addition, you've made many other mistakes. The way you've costed the electricity. I'll give you an example. You come up with a cost which is completely pie in the sky cost of less than five pence per kilowatt hour. You're three and a half, uh, it's three and a half pence a kilowatt hour borrowing a government borrowing rate, UK government borrowing rates, on just the wind farm element, the £40,000, providing you stick to budget. And for I've seen, I, I've just learned today, that you've allowed £100,000 for the roads there. <laughs> It'll cost you that to go across the bog. That, that's 40, my own drive to Asheville to it cost me 40,000. So I know your costs are way out already. But most importantly, the entire program is wrong from the beginning. So you're only going to get a third of the energy out that you can be estimating out to people. So with that, with that, I've said, this is not, you see, at some point, this is going to come out. Now, if this, uh, and what I've said to the government, and what I'm saying everywhere, and I'm going to be follow-up videos, everything on this, and what I'm saying is, there's no choice in this. You've got to stop what you're doing and rethink. Just stop and pause, because you're spending millions now on a small island. You're spending millions pursuing a path that is already flawed. And there's many other errors down the road you've made, many other mistakes. And this isn't complicated science. This anyone can understand. So why would the Isle of Man get all this three times more than anyone else. Why would that happen? Well, it doesn't happen, right? You're not in your own world of different physics. You're not in your own world of different economics. And then there are some statements made by the people doing this um, that I've been watching, such as, oh, we don't have to pay constraint payments, which is when the wind blows overnight and you don't need it. Um, in the in UK, we have to pay anyway. And you don't have to, because you'll own it. But what it'll do is reduce your load factor. So if you're wasting energy turning off the wind, so you don't get the full potential. Instead of it being 27%, it may be 15%. So you still have to pay. And you've still got to keep your gas station going all this time. So the, the load factor would reduce uh, if you put any more wind in. Now, the 20 megawatts below your minimum overnight, so you're OK, right? And the 20 megawatts, let me give you some figures. The truth is you'll get about 11% of your energy from wind with, with, with the 20 megawatts in. That's the truth. And that's based on a 47.2 or something gigawatt hours. Yeah? That's what everyone else normally would, would get. So with that, that's 11%. But you're now going to keep the gas going in background because you haven't got, a, you've got an efficient gas turbine, but uh, it's called a closed circuit. It takes longer to adjust. So that's got to back up the wind, as it were. But on average, all you've got, your overnight is about 25 um, the megawatts, and your day can be up to 80. Right? But all you've got is a maximum of 20, an average of 5.4, and sometimes zero. And when the wind's below 12 miles an hour on a gentle day, you get nothing. Right? And then the ridiculous claims, claims coming from the island. Uh, the leader of your Green Party said batteries would be the best storage to back up the wind. The battery cost would be 3,786 millions. 
That's 3,007. This is how out of tune the, what I was watching. So I was asked to come to the island by residents to help them with a bit of expertise, and I provide my services free because I feel so strongly about it. And I was asked to come to the island to help them to point out these errors, hoping that government would say, hey, there's a mistake, let's examine this. But no, what I'm getting back from your members of parliament, your MHKs, whatever you call them, is excuses. Like, well, we heard of 50% being possible. Hold on, that's, you're up to 85, so, but no one's even claimed the truth of the 85 now. But they're saying, oh, we'll be all windy here, we can, our topography's different. No, no, no. And these people who are making these statements are your members of parliament, the equivalent anyway, who don't know what they're talking about. So that your members of parliament, your MHKs, I think you call them, uh, uh, are making claims on Facebook and so on, which are ridiculous. They're, they're inventing, inventing things like, oh, well, the topography is different here, we can channel the wind, without understanding anything about the subject. So, and then I go on, I go on to Manx Radio, and all I do is get personal attacked, without the means of responding, by the way. I wasn't allowed to respond. Uh, and that is the argument of a... Re that's the argument of a scoundrel doing ad hominem attacks because you're not dealing with the subject. And I gave a talk last night, which I'm afraid went to three and a half hours or so, um, but I had to cover the subject to try to under get people to understand not just what's going on here, but the falsehood of the entire narrative. You actually have a very good power system now. You've got gas, turbine. Now, if you just run gas, nothing else, that's the cheapest. You've got a bit of cheap hydroelectric, fine, that's great. You've got gas, you've got a backup with diesel in the peaks to when the big numbers arrive on the island. You've got it right. But what you're going to do now is borrow, probably with the interconnector at 75 million or more, you're going to borrow over 100 million. And, and, and there's no need for it. You don't have to do anything, actually. Right? But the arguments coming forward are wrong. Now, what happens is people run away from debating with me. You know, they really do. And it wasn't a debate on radio. It was just... Uh, me listening to it, personal insults and untruths about myself. And just so they know, by the way, I don't belong to any political parties. And the reason I purposefully don't is because I do my climate change work. And that work, um, I don't want to have diff make it political because it's science. And that's my work. So I don't want to involve. What I do say in the UK is only vote for parties that support stopping net zero. Only do that. And that's the only commitment I make. So I appear on television regularly now in the UK, and I'm doing my best to stop the madness of this world. How much do you know, and if you do know about it, what do you think of the Isle of Man government's net zero policies? Well, it's a group thing. Uh, um, whilst the rest of the world is beginning to change, Holland now not buying the farms, you know, Holland now reversing some of the net zero, Europe saying, EU saying, oh, gas is now green. Just change the four laws of physics, you know, by legislation. Uh, and New Zealand now saying, yeah, we'll drill for oil. And by the way, we'll stop the methane, the fart tax, I think they call it. Yeah. So all these things are beginning to fall apart and governments are beginning. And you are carrying in, in a sort of addicted manner along this yellow brick What do you think has caused them to change uh, direction on this? What do I think could cause them to uh, change? It caused them to change direction. Oh, I think the only way, from my experience and the reaction I've had, which is totally dishonest back, kickback, and the only thing that's going to change them is people here. And I, I'm hoping that we could, the movement is starting here, and hopefully a political party, a one-issue political party could start, which could start to drive and show them the wrong. Well, look, if I said to you, you've done all this work and you've spent millions so far, but you haven't spent anything on me, my time is free, right? And, and, you spend, and you're continuing to spend millions on people who, who in, 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 both in government and maybe consultants, are driving you to errors of two to three hundred percent. So that surely should say, any normal, decent politician would say, hold on here, Let's meet Paul, let, let's or look at this, or let's do a Zoom call with him and look at this so we can understand what he's saying. And all I'm saying is, you're not different to the rest of the world around you. You're not different to Ireland. You know, they're all in that region, yeah? You're not different, and there's nothing special about you, and you've got the same laws of physics. Given that members, certainly members of the Manx Parliament, have been so critical against you, mm -hmm. um, they were invited to come to the talk to... Yeah. Uh, to try and debunk what you're saying, um, how many of them turned up? One. One. 
And he had been trained by in the Al Gore School in, in, in German in America. And uh, and I think he's an honest man, but I think well, I was disappointed, let me put it that way, because basic things like how you measure temperature were not understood. And his claim to his appeal to authority, oh, they must be right. There's no place in science. And at the end, he walked up to me and said, Paul, there's billions and billions and billions of tons of CO2 going in. Well, I've already explained all that in the talk. You know, what the hell is we say this for? So what I'm listening to there is a religion. I'm listening to a CO2 religion. The manifestations of which I'll be dealing with tomorrow on, on a national channel, GB News, which is stop oil and all that nonsense. Yeah, I'm the peaceful guy. I get attacked by stop oil. I had one of them sentenced to a year's conditional, you know, a year's suspended sentence, a criminal record and a fine because of the violence towards me. Yes, I don't, I'm not violent to anyone, right? And what I've suffered from is a whole campaign against me personally, quoting all sorts of total untruths about me. And I wasn't even allowed to properly, although it didn't, wasn't too bad, but I wasn't allowed to fully, sorry, to fully respond to them on, TV, on your radio because um, an attack would be made by the Green Party member, uh, leader, and, uh, and then it went on. I, I wasn't allowed to respond. So all I can say is I'm not a party member of any party. I, I'm not an extremist of any sort, but that, that, that shouldn't disqualify me. And what they were saying, the campaign against me was, don't let him on. Don't let him on radio. The campaign against me was, well, the campaign was, you shouldn't be allowed to have the hall. You shouldn't rent the hall out. But gladly, you've got a person in charge of that hall who's got guts. Now, you also alluded the fact that you were due to talk in one of the Isle of Man's schools. Correct. Uh, but for some reason, that was cancelled, I think was the word you used at the presentation that yes. we were at today. Could you just tell us about what happened there? I can only tell you so much. Um, it was arranged that I, give, I take part in a debate in a school. And, um, and I was really excited about it. Now, if I was going to talk to a school by myself, I wouldn't even mention climate stuff. What I would do is teach them what science is. Because climate science today, most of it is not science. Because it doesn't allow criticism, it doesn't allow debate, and so on. And it's consensus stuff, which doesn't have no place in science. So my talk would have revolved around that. But if I'd have had a person against me, then I can. I'm allowed to then, yeah? And I'd have been very gentle because, I'll tell you why, because I'm, the young mind is an absorber for what goes on in life afterwards. So they're, they're a sponge, a brain of a child's a sponge. And you've got a terrific responsibility. So I was, I'd have been very careful. But it was stopped, and that's all I can say. But then again, I've already found out in the media... Who stopped it? The, was it the education I, I don't know who stopped it. That's the best way to say it. I'm, I'm just going to... I'm not getting anyone into trouble. So what I can... You were deplatformed? Yes, I was deplatformed. And the attempts were made to stop me going on to Manx Radio as well. Right? And other people came on Facebook, and um, what got me were there two big leaders on Facebook saying, you know, I'm a fascist, a racist, you name it, you know. <laughs> and he shouldn't be allowed to speak in the hall. So I had the people against me with vested interests. I've got no vested interest. I get no income from anyone. Given you've been so critical of the Manx Utilities Authority's plans uh, for the wind farm, why do you think they won't come on the platform with you and argue their case? They haven't got a case. As regards the percentages, it's black and white. You know, I'm not talking about opinions here. You don't, those load factors are wrong. They're, they're just wrong, right? And, and, and I, I listened to that little silly girl on, on the radio with me saying, oh, well, that's, all, you know, that's old fashioned data. You had a proper survey done of wind farms potential in, in the Isle of Man in 2010, right? And the wind factors they came up with average between 19 and 31 percent. So they came up with an average of 25. I, I was thinking about 27. You can argue that, right? So you've already got this in the background. So not only do my figures agree with everyone around you, but they agree with the previous engineering report for the Isle of Man. Yes, but that then is totally made up. But the excuse then becomes they're 14-year-old figures. The physics don't change. The physics of the load factors are the same, basically, right? And, and you, you get all sorts of lies and deceit because this is nothing to do with CO2. 
This is to do with the control system. I met your farmers today. 15% are now having carbon surveys. Life is carbon. You're made of it. And, and, and the carbon surveys are a beginning of a huge control system coming onto you as humans. You won't be allowed the flights. You'll have those restricted. You'll have those rationed. And this and that. I won't be rationed for them, by the way. And at the same time, I'm saying this. You've got, I think, four or five, including the leader in this. I think Lizzie's her name or something. You've got the leader flying out to the St. Helena in, 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 uh, in, the, in the Atlantic there. I actually sail them about, so I love the island. And you, you've, got, you've got them flying out there at great cost to you there. Well, if they were so blinking keen on the CO2 reductions, why don't they do that little conference on Zoom? Yeah. And, and so there's one rule for one and one rule for the other. My side on this is the Manx people and the damage they're going to be caused. And if they, I think, in my view, and this is just my opinion now, if they go ahead and ignore the facts they've made these mistakes and don't consult with me, free, I've offered my advice free, don't to understand the nature of the mistake and therefore the consequences. So you, one of your MHKs said, oh, I just longer to pay for it. No. No, you've got other things really wrong, right, really wrong. So you haven't allowed for all the costs, because the cost that wins intermittent. You've got to allow for the intermittency, and they affect everywhere through the system. This is why gas in Britain, which is £65 a kilowatt hour now, much cheaper than wind or anything, right? Much cheaper than wind or solar. That's a fact. Um, so it's, it's cheaper. But the £65 got 25% of that is because of wind. Because when the winds, if you say to a gas station, right, we want you, and this is what you're going to put in, this is the pattern, they know what the business is. But if you say to a business, um, you're going to supply gas, oh, we can't tell you because um, we might need you in an hour or two to give us so much. Then the intermittency, they've got the same buildings, the same staff, because sometimes they're 100% at it. This is the same as Paul Rose for you. Uh, uh, and so you're not going to reduce your gas cost. You're going to save a little bit of gas, but only a little bit. And your costs are going to shoot up. And the same as Denmark. Denmark's the highest number of wind turbines per person in the world and the highest price. Putting aside the broader global issues of yeah. climate change, sea yeah. levels and, all, and CO2, focusing purely on the impact of the wind farm that's proposed here mm. on the Isle of Man, what do you think are the, um, the main impacts that building this facility is going to have on the, the island? Right, when it goes into those woods, you're going to put five stations into those woods. The base of these, the base of these is incredibly deep. I mean, enormous foundations, enormous areas around them cleared. I mean, just, you think about it, huge wind farm, you know, 65% higher than the um, St. Paul's Cathedral in London, and the leverage on that. So you have these enormous bases deep, tens of thousands of tons of steel and concrete. So you're going to put these big circles in and bring big vehicles through. You're going to bring veins 65, maybe 60, maybe 55 metres long down, you know, up roads and so on. You're going to have to re... It'll trash your roads. I've been looking today. And don't forget, part of me is an engineer. You know, I'm a chartered engineer. And I'm telling you now, you're going to ruin the bog completely, that, that wildlife. The wildlife from the woods, forget it. Because you, what you'll have is wind turbines taking up huge amounts of space in the air, turning at 150, 180 miles an hour. And the birds don't understand that. Bang. The bats there don't even have to get in range because the change in pressure you get, the differential pressure around a, wi a wind vane, can actually burst their lungs. In Germany, 200,000 bats a year are killed. Yeah? And is that as a direct result of wind? Directly wind to the actual wind turbine. And then you've got 3,500 tonnes of insects being killed. That changes the ecology of Germany now. And then you've got uh, the bats, the 200,000. And then in the North Sea, they put an offshore wind farm outside Holland there in the North Sea. And um, that has now got a reduction in the diving bird population in that area of 90%. So if you put up bird mashers in the air, and the other thing is you've got a bog there, which is a very ecologically good bog area, you know, in terms of the studies, and the study being done saying, yeah, this is a high, high state, it's got more than 101 species in it, and so on. You're going to completely trash that. You've got to go through a bog. The only way you can pass a road through a bog is to take it down to the concrete underneath and build it up, right? I'm looking at the hydrology effects on that. You've also got downstream of the wind turbines, going for kilometres, a shadow tail, which actually changes the ecology in the shadow. So I'm providing the farmers here with that information. Right? What's a shadow tail? The, the sh it, it, imagine you've taken the energy out the wind. So downstream of it now is a totally different state of, of turbulence and things in the wind. Right? 
and it also it, you, you're taking the heat out of the wind in effect as well so you, you, you actually change the ecology of the ground for a kilometer or two yeah and uh, and I'm going to make videos on this I'm making a number of things videos for the Isle of Man but it's actually for everyone and um, the, I'm going to expose the Isle of Man now to a wider audience what I'm doing <coughs> instead of really just targeted the Isle of Man um, to, but still using that say look what's going on here look how silly this is and I'm hoping that uh, I can help the residents oppose the madness that path you're on and above all for everyone in the Isle of Man save money because it's a lie that this is cheaper it is a total lie